In today's video, I'll be painting Bo-Katan's helmet from The Mandalorian. This project was one of my first times using an airbrush, and I used it to experiment with different forms of masking to create a final helmet that I was really happy with. The techniques I used in this project will be used in a future project to make something really amazing, and I hope you enjoy this two-part series. Thank you. Off camera, I went through my usual process of sanding and filling layer lines, and then painted the entire helmet gloss black. Once it was gloss black, my first step was to mask off any areas that would remain black on the final product. This is mostly the V and the stripes at the top front of the helmet. I designed these stencils in Autodesk Sketchbook and then cut them out on my Cricut Maker. Then I masked off all the parts that wouldn't be blue on the final helmet. I probably should have painted the entire helmet white at this point, with all of the parts that would remain black marked off, to get a more even coat of blue over the entire surface. But this ended up working out, it just took a few extra coats. Masking fluid was applied over certain areas of the helmet to replicate battle damage. This was later peeled off and gave the helmet a really cool scarred effect. This was the main reason I started with a black helmet as opposed to a white helmet. Then I mixed up the blue paint that would cover the majority of the helmet. This was my first time mixing an acrylic paint with water for airbrushing, and I really struggled with it. The airbrush kept consistently clogging and splattering paint all over the surface, and I was unable to get a consistent blue coat over the whole helmet. Luckily, however, since there was a black undercoat, the inconsistencies showed through and made it look aged, which required me to do less weathering, and I was happy with the overall effect. Since recording this video, I've done a little more research on mixing paints for the airbrush and found out that certain paints need to be mixed with Windex, certain paints need to be mixed with alcohol, and certain paints need to be mixed with water. My assumption was that since it was a water-based paint, it just needed to be thinned down with water, but that was incorrect. After all these issues, I was able to get a somewhat consistent blue coat over the entire surface. I'm masking off the areas that are going to be painted dark blue. I painted everything dark blue by hand because I didn't want to mask off large areas of the helmet and risk peeling off the light blue paint. I was also worried about mixing the blue paint into the airbrush again. I did my best to keep my brush strokes going in the same direction. Now it's time to peel off all the masking fluid, revealing the black underneath. This was probably the most satisfying part of the whole project, and it gave it a really cool effect.
I didn't try to capture one particular version of this helmet from the Star Wars universe, so I just added damage where I thought it would make sense, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now it's time to peel off the masking tape and get started on the face of the helmet. Unfortunately, my footage of masking off and painting the front of the helmet white was all lost, but luckily the rest of the footage from here on out was all there. While removing this layer of masking tape, most of the lines came out very crisp, but unfortunately in one spot, the tape peeled back some of the paint. But this helmet's battle damaged, so I just chalked it up to extra damage. Now I'm applying more vinyl stencils that were made in Sketchbook and cut out on the Cricut. The ears were attached with a 5 minute epoxy. I used rub and buff to make the ears look metallic, as well as add additional battle scarring throughout the entire helmet. I gave the helmet a wash of grime using a dark gray acrylic paint that I watered down with water. Now I'm making a template for the visor. Normally I'd make the visor out of a replacement welding mask, but since this helmet's not wearable, I'm actually using some black Cricut vinyl to save a little bit of money. If I decide to give this helmet to someone who can wear it later, I can easily remove the vinyl and add a welding mask. Here's the final helmet, and I'm thrilled with how it turned out.